Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another Bad Batch review episode. Now, I've actually got some extra content for those of you who enjoy my takes on the Bad Batch. I've completely retooled the Eckhart Slaughter Patreon. The lowest tier will get you access to not only lots of Patreon exclusive videos in the future, but also will allow you to submit questions to the monthly video Q&As I'll be doing. And today I also recorded a watch along slash reaction video for the Bad Batch. So if you want to watch the show, with me even the lowest level of support will get you that and i'll link that down in the description but it's patreon.com slash eckhart slatter anyway today we'll be talking about season one episode 10 of the bad batch called the common ground and this was a really interesting episode because we had just finished sort of a big multi-episode plot arc and are sort of back on the main adventure and i've always said for the bad batch and the mandalorian i think this is the third or fourth time i'm bringing this up i think that it's important that we have different intensity for episodes we have to have some like the last few which are very high in importance and which focus really on the main storyline but in between that you also have to have lower moments which focus more on the characters and adventures and whatever else you can't go full speed all times because that makes the really dramatic and impactful moments well less impactful if you're always going full steam it's just going to be an exhausting show and it's not going to be well paced dramatically so this was another episode where the bad batch Sans Omega this time, she was left with Sid, are going on a mission for Sid, who is the barkeep that they owe money to. This time, though, we're more in direction with the actual Republic as they're traveling to the planet Raxus in order to save a sender who's being held during the Imperial occupation. Raxus, you may remember from the Clone Wars, was a very, very important Separatist planet. It was arguably their capital. It was the home of the Separatist Parliament. That's that's where we see the Bonteris, for example, in the Clone Wars, so it's not surprising that now after the Clone Wars, the Empire has fully cracked down and is occupying the planet even more so than the rest of the galaxy. I mean, Raxus wasn't happy with Republic rule, that's why they joined the CIS. It's obvious that they're certainly not going to be supportive of the Empire, and that is sort of the main contentious issue. The Senator is supposed to pacify the population, of course he refuses, and is taken into custody his droid then calls for help and of course the message goes to Sid. Now this is a bit of a small universe thing, I'm not going to complain about it too much. I think I would have preferred though if the droid had reached out maybe to Rex. We know that Rex is in the early stages of rebelling or at least fighting the Empire so it would have made sense that he might have connections and then Rex knowing the Bad Batch could have called Sid. That's just a small complaint, that's how I would have preferred it but it doesn't really matter. The Bad Batch then make their way to Raxus, they break into the palace and they rescue the center. Then we get, of course, a very fun chase on the ATTEs. And all while this is happening, we also see Omega back in SIDS dummying some people at Dejaric and eventually making enough money to pay off the Bad Batch's debt, which is important. I'll talk about that later. Either way, we get an interesting bit at the end where the senator is wondering whether he should actually leave his people, and this is something that's been very common in sort of the early empire days of the galaxy with people wondering how do they best serve people do they have to protect themselves under the empire's new regime like bail organa for example we know that he pretended to be supportive of the empire so that he could work where necessary and help out that's sort of a betrayal as is leaving your people but you have to look at what's actually most important what will keep you safe and where eventually you can do the most good all right, so on its face, not a lot happened in this episode, but I think there are three main things that deserve discussion. First of all, this episode focuses a lot on Omega's tactical abilities, and let's be honest, this is a show that's meant to be accessible not only to adults, but to children. So when it focuses on Omega being a very talented Jajaric player, that's the Star Wars chess, that's not a mistake. It's not a mistake that she's described as being basically a tactical genius. She's not really good at Jajaric because she's lucky or she played the game a lot on Kamino. She's good at Dejaric because she's got some special skills that I think we'll learn more about later. I think that Omega is probably more than just a first generation clone. I think there's more to her importance than just that. I think it will turn out that she's been augmented in her own way. I think that her intelligence and her tactics will be something that the show plays on eventually. And I was really hoping that we would see the game
staying between Hunter and Omega because if she's able to outthink him already, he's a seasoned warrior, then that would have been very, very impressive. Now, of course, in real life, Chess or Dejarik is not directly applicable or comparable to military tactics, but in a show like The Bad Batch in Star Wars, of course, it's relevant. The other thing that's important is we're actually getting a good look at the post-Clone Wars Confederacy. Now, of course, Rax isn't necessarily representative of the entire galaxy and of all CIS forces, but I think it is notable that even that planet is completely under the Republic boot heel now. In Star Wars Legends, even after the Clone Wars, there were a lot of Separatist holdouts, and I'm curious whether canon is going to go in that direction at all. I don't think, however, that unlike Legends, I don't think that Star Wars canon will have open warfare against Separatist factions holding out in the Outer Rim. I think instead what we'll see focused on is Separatists sort of being integrated into the growing Rebel Alliance when that starts taking form in early Rebel Cells. That's probably what we're going to see a bit in Andor. We know that Andor's family was in the CIS and that that's how he was raised and then, then they sort of were assimilated by the Rebel Alliance. But even on their capital, the Confederacy has no power. The Empire is fully in control. They're very powerful. This is a relatively clean and violent transition. On that note too, another thing I wanted to mention is regarding Clone Wars, and I talked about this in my live reaction, again, link to my Patreon if you want to watch that. I speculated before The Bad Batch came out that, especially just based on scenes in Revenge of the Sith, that there's something that fundamentally changes in the heads of clones after Order 66. Order 66 wasn't just an order to kill the Jedi, then the clones go back to normal. I mean, we've already seen that with Crosshair, for example, but it's clear that there's some form of ongoing coercion and control taking place, and I do kind of wonder whether that might have some effect on the clones and whether maybe it's that sort of ongoing messing with their brain which is what eventually causes the clones to die out or whatever happens to them we know the clones disappear mysteriously about a year after the clone wars and maybe this is somewhat related anyway the third important thing i wanted to mention is a pretty obvious one the bad batch is now free they've paid off their debt to sid they may still take some jobs because they're going to need money moving forward but i don't think they'll be stuck at SIDS for the rest of the season. I think they'll probably go somewhere else, and to me, that's pretty interesting. Where will they go? I don't know. The galaxy's pretty open. Maybe they'll try to track down Rex. They'll probably try to stay on the run from the Empire. Wouldn't be surprised if they had another run-in with Crosshair sooner rather than later. All in all, though, a great episode. I really liked it. Probably not as much as the last few, but those were really, really good, and those episodes wouldn't be as good, as I mentioned, without kind of the adventure episodes like this, which help set up the characters together and help give us a bit of break from the incredible pace that we've had over the last arc. That, however, guys, is all from me. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.